My name is Doug Parker, host of the Cruise Radio Podcast, and this is a tour of the brand new Norwegian Encore. If you like the video and you want to see more content, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. All right, on with the tour. Let's start with the facts. Norwegian Encore was launched in 2019. She is the very last ship in their Breakaway Plus class. She is 1,094 feet long, weighs in at 167,800 gross registered tons, and carries 3,998 guests at double occupancy. So first off, know that this is a big ship and we have a lot of ground to cover. So let's get started with the tour. We'll start on deck number five, which is all staterooms. And those rooms are either inside or ocean view cabins. The only other thing you'll find on deck five is the various kids clubs. And those clubs are broken down into three different categories. There's the guppies from ages six months to under three years old. Then you have the Splash Academy from three to 12. And then within the Splash Academy, they kind of break it down into subcategories. Three to five-year-olds, they have six to nine. And then preteens, which is from 10 to 12. And then for the teenagers, they have Entourage. That's between 13 and 17. Not surprisingly, you'll also find a teen-friendly video arcade here on Deck five as well. Up to deck number six forward is where you'll find Q Texas Smokehouse. This is Norwegian Cruise Line's barbecue venue. This was rolled out in early 2018 when Norwegian Bliss came online. One of the really cool things about this space is that there's a stage in front of the restaurant and most nights there will be live music in here. So while Q is a specialty restaurant, meaning for fee, F-E-E, -E, you do get dinner and a show. If you want to catch the show but not eat, there's also a bar in the back, and that's a perfect place just to hang out, have a cocktail, and watch some live music. We'll head towards the main atrium now. There's actually two ways to get there. The first one is just walking past the forward bank of elevators. The other way to go will take you past the library, a few meeting rooms, and a photo studio. This is where you can go if you want to set up a special photo shoot. The atrium features a large stage where there's almost always something going on, whether it's a game or a band, something always happening in here. There's plenty of comfortable seating in here, as well as a Starbucks, an internet cafe, the guest services desk, and the shore excursion desk, all within this space. Again, a very big space and very spread out. Lots of room down here in the main atrium. People often refer to the atrium as the heart of the ship, but I think on Norwegian Breakaway and the Breakaway Plus class ships, it's actually 6, 7, and 8 Ocean Place, which spans three decks, of course, 6, 7, and 8, as you might have guessed from the name. On Encore, like her sister ships, the area is anchored by a chandelier that is constantly changing colors, and as much of a piece of art as it is a light fixture, really cool just to kind of watch it transform from one color to another. Now, on one side of this circle, space. We have the social comedy and nightclub. You have the silent disco in here and, and all of that. It's got multi-purpose venue where they host a variety of events, really. This is where the comedian performs. They also do the show Happy Hour Prohibition, the musical, in here, too. Across from the social club is Coco's, which is a four-fee dessert shop. Just past Coco's is Teppanyaki. Like on other ships and other lines, this is a four-fee restaurant where the chef puts on a show while he's making your dinner. It's always fun, especially if you go with a group of people. Next up is the art gallery, and, well, you know what to expect here. I've never been tempted to buy a piece of art on a ship, but it can be fun to go to the auctions. Just be careful. A couple of glasses of champagne. You might be walking out with a $10,000 Peter Max piece, so uh, just keep that in mind. Just past the gallery is the Mix Bar, which sits between two of the ship's three main dining rooms, Taste and Savor. All of the dining rooms serve the same menu, which changes daily and offers a pretty wide selection of dishes. It's also worth checking out the main dining room for lunch on sea days. Just make sure you check the freestyle daily for the hours. Moving up to deck number seven, that's where the Manhattan dining room is going to be, all the way in the back of the ship. That is the third main dining room. Now, while it serves the same menu as Taste and Savor, this space feels a little more upscale. They also have a stage in here and a dance floor because most of the nights there's some live music going on in here. We also have the really big, beautiful windows at the back of the restaurant, which overlook the wake. All in all, this feels more like a upscale specialty restaurant, despite it being included in your cruise fair. Now, coming out of the Manhattan dining room, you're going to walk past the aft bank of elevators on the ship. There are two banks of elevators here. There's a forward bank and an aft bank, and that takes us into the casino. 
As you enter the casino, you'll see the skyline bar on your left. Then we move into the casino itself, which is massive. One thing I love about this ship is that the casino has an enclosed smoking area. So, and don't worry, smokers, it's not some small dark space with a few machines. It's actually got a ton of slot machines as well as gaming tables in here. On like Breakaway, the casino smoking area wasn't enclosed, and this became a problem since 678 Ocean Place, is the whole concept involves it being an open central area. This meant that all the smoke from the casino on deck 7 was falling down into deck 6 and rising up into deck number 8, so it really made the whole ship kind of smell. Now exiting the casino, you'll find the local. On other NCL ships, this is known as Oshihans. The name has changed as well as the CEO, but it's still the same venue, and it's open 24 hours. This means that it's very, very popular with a late night crowd. Around 3 a.m., it can get pretty rowdy in here. People usually take full advantage of their drink package and then take full advantage of the local sports bar with some chicken wings, a salad, a hot dog on that pretzel bun. So good. Now, the local overlooks the atrium, and there are seats all the way around the edge. So if you want to grab a bite to eat while playing Deal or No Deal or listening to the band, this is pretty convenient. And that brings us to the front of Deck 7, which is the level of the Encore Theater. Uh, it's really the second level because there is an entrance on Deck Number 6, but the most used one is right here on deck number seven. At the entrance, you'll find the box office, which is where you'll want to head shortly after you board the ship in order to make reservations for any of the shows you might want to catch. So you might want to check this out first and also the dining as soon as you board. Up to deck number eight aft, there's going to be Cagney's Steakhouse and Los Lobos. Cagney's is their specialty steakhouse, and Los Lobos is Mexican Tex-Mex type food. Really good empanadas at Los Lobos and amazing steaks over at Cagney's. Both of these venues overlook the Manhattan Room, which we just spoke about a few moments ago. That is the main dining room in the back of the ship. And then also, you could dine outside up here because NCL has the waterfront on this class of ships. So you could dine inside or outside. And the waterfront ex uh, it basically extends from the very back of the ship all the way forward on both the port and starboard side. So it's really nice out here. And, you know, we had a chance to grab a drink leaving great stirrup key one night on our cruise and it was just yeah it's words can't describe the connection to the water these days a lot of cruise ships take that connection away and cl bringing it back with the waterfront one thing you might miss easily if you aren't looking for it down this little side hall when you're walking out to the waterfront is the bake shop and just outside and around the corner from the bake shop is the gelato stand in fact i did miss it as well back inside you'll find more duty-free shops you have trade winds which is the norwegian duty-free shop a little tip if you're looking to buy some souvenirs don't wait until the last day the place is a madhouse plus if you're wanting to buy something like a norwegian branded sweatshirt maybe a ship they can run out and not restock until they get back to the home port so buy what you want early on in the cruise i've learned that the hard way so many times ocean blue is also here you might remember when norwegian cruise line first opened this seafood restaurant it was part of a partnership with iron chef jeffrey zakarian well he's gone but the restaurant lives on and like most other venues on decade ocean blue has seating available on the waterfront as well and what could be better than enjoying high-end seafood on the ocean. Yeah, I can't think of anything better. Moving on, we have the Sugarcane Mojito Bar, which, like a lot of other venues on this deck, has a great outdoor area. The Cavern Club is also in this area for all you Beatles fans out there. There's live music, usually a Beatles cover band in here, and they have a karaoke nights and other events inside. This bar also has a great space out on the waterfront if you'd rather hang outside there. Just past the Cavern Club, there is the Maltings Whiskey Bar. I'll let you in on a little secret. They serve pretty much every kind of liquor, not just whiskey. I rolled in there and asked for a vodka soda. Someone next to me said they don't serve vodka here. The bartender said no problem and handed me a Tito's and soda. So you can get whatever you want here, not just whiskey. You also have Cellar's Wine Bar here, and then you have Onda by Scarpetta. This is a high-end Italian eatery that replaces La Cucina that's found on the other Norwegian Cruise Line ships. This is a four-fee venue, also available for waterfront seating as well. And then you'll pass the elevators, and then all the way forward, port and starboard side, you have two venues. On the port side, you have the District Brew House. Lots of beers on tap here, and also cans and bottles as well. More of a pub-type thing, also an outside area. And then on the opposite side of this, you're going to have Food Republic. 
another small tapas food type venue with a lot of finger foods you order off iPads. Very techy, very good. Decks 9 through 14 are all staterooms. A couple of spots, though, you might need to know. The Medical Center is on Deck 13. That's kind of odd. Unlucky 13 Medical Center, hand in hand there. You'll also find the Solo Studio Cabins and Studio Lounge in here. The Solo Cabins are 99 square feet, and I mean, they're a Solo Studio Cabin. Very basic, very simple, as you see from the footage here. One thing I do love about this area is the studio lounge, though. They serve snacks throughout the day. There's a coffee machine in here, juices, cookies, fruit, all of that. So kind of a place to for the single travelers to meet and mingle and not feel the pressures of outside. Not that you would feel the pressures of like being by yourself, but a place for like-minded people to meet, if that makes sense. Moving up to Deck 15, the back half of the ship is occupied by staterooms, but the entire front half of Deck 15 is the Observation Lounge, which is hands down my favorite spot on the ship. The space is just gorgeous with floor-to-ceiling windows, tons of seating, there's a bar towards the front of the space, and there's almost always some food set up here at these miniature buffet stations, which are perfect if you're wanting a little bit to eat before you feel like going to a restaurant or up to the buffet. It's just pretty incredible how much space NCL devoted to this area. There's a similar space a few decks up, which is exclusive for the use of the Haven guests, but this space down here is a lot larger than the Haven area. Deck 16 forward is where you're going to find the Garden Cafe, which is NCL's buffet. Like the other ships in the class, the buffet is given a lot of space with plenty of seating. There's a wide variety of foods at various stations, which are like the meat carving stations, the salad station, the pastries, the breads, etc. It's mirrored on each side, so it's the same on the port and starboard side for the most part. There's a soft serve ice cream machine in here, a beverage station where you can get juices, teas, waters, etc. Also a bar in the same area and a Starbucks coffee dispenser and a wine dispenser. Now the Starbucks coffee and the glasses of wine, those do cost extra and be aware that the wine dispensers are not covered by your drink package. Outside on the pool deck, there are two pools, two bars, the aqua park for the kids, and some water slides. There are also loungers both here and on the next deck up. What there's not for a ship of this size is a lot of space. Here's the thing. On other ships in this class, they have a very large space called H2O, which is an adults-only area with its own bars, hot tubs, a big screen there. It's a great place to get away from the crowds. The last ship it was on was Norwegian Bliss. Um, but on this ship, there is no Spice H2O. Instead, they've used that space for things like the Galaxy Pavilion and Laser Tag Arena, which we'll talk about in a minute. So because of that, there will likely be more people fighting for prime real estate by the pool, which will probably mean more chair hogs than ever. Anyway, moving back beyond the pool deck and continuing our tour of Deck 16, we head back into the Pulse Fitness Center where you can work off all those calories from eating all week. And then you have the Mandara Spa. You'll find plenty of beauty parlors in here and for the men, a barber shop. And one of my favorite spots on the ship, it's the back of Deck 16, the Mandara Spa. Of course, you can come and get a massage or acupuncture or any of the other treatments they offer in here for a fee. You can also purchase a thermal suite pass though which gives you access to the saunas the whirlpool the salt room a snow room for the whole week now i believe the prices will vary depending on the time of year and where the ship is sailing but she told me it was around 297 per guest for the thermal suite pass for the seven night cruise um, you could also buy a day pass if you'd like to do that as well um, they do have limited capacity in there and they only sell a couple of hundred so you want to get in early and buy this pass as soon as you get on the ship on deck 17, the front area is occupied by the Havens version of the Observation Lounge. It's two stories with great views, but then again, this is only available to those who are staying in the Haven. And then just a bit back from the Observation Lounge is the Haven Courtyard. This is where you'll find a pool, a hot tub, places to relax. The Haven also has its own bar and lounge, one deck up, and a restaurant with both indoor and outdoor seating. There's also a private sun deck for the guests in the Haven, um, a lot of space dedicated to the Haven guests on Norwegian Encore. 
continuing to move toward the back of the ship on deck 17. This is where you'll find more of those loungers overlooking the pool below, as well as hot tubs on both sides of the ship, a jogging track that loops through this area. A quick suggestion, though, if you want to get a run-in without having to dodge people, I'd recommend coming here really early or just go to the fitness center and grab a treadmill because this kind of loops around the space where people are lounging and getting drinks and the bar waiters are walking back and forth. So keep that in mind if you're a runner on the ship. As we move back, we come to the American Diner on several other NCL ships. Margaritaville was located here, but that really hasn't been a thing or been really that successful for them. So it's not surprising to see something a little bit different here. American Diner is a four-fee restaurant offering things like cheeseburgers, seafood baskets, loaded nachos, and some desserts. The prices are pretty reasonable, but you can get burger and fries at the buffet for free and not pay. So, I mean, again, it's just all about the experience, right? Le Bistro is NCL's French restaurant, which is a great place to head on formal night, but make reservations because everyone else is thinking the same thing. It's a nice space, although I will say it doesn't have the same intimate ambiance you'll find on Le Bistro on smaller ships like Norwegian Gym. At the very back of deck number 17 is Galaxy Pavilion, which is a giant virtual reality playground. You can put on some goggles, jump in a Jeep, and the next thing you know, you're being chased by dinosaurs, that kind of thing. This is very cool, but it would also be really easy for your kids to rack up a big bill in here, so make sure you keep an eye on that. Games will cost you, like the escape room is around $15 a person, and you can play the games a la carte or buy a week-long pass. Just check at the Galaxy Pavilion once you get on board. Moving up to deck 18, the front part of the ship is taken up by the haven spaces we mentioned before, including the restaurant and a sun deck. And then on the back of the ship is where you're going to find two e-ticket attractions, the Encore Speedway and the Laser Tag Arena. As you've probably heard by now, the Encore Speedway is the longest and fastest at sea. The track actually extends over the side of the ship by 13 feet. Truth be told, you don't really notice that while you're zipping around the course. It's not like the track is made out of plexiglass. It's still fast, and it's very fun to ride. A ticket will set you back around $15 or maybe just north of $15. Uh, per time. Uh, limited passes are also available for this spot as well, um, as well as the laser tag. Again, you'll have to check for pricing once you get on board. Behind this space is the laser tag arena, which is very big and very cool, by the way, because on Norwegian Joy and Bliss, it really doesn't, it's just a blah laser tag course. This is made of like mythical sea creatures. I think the theme is Journey to Atlantis. This does cost extra. You do have to make reservations. One tip though, it is better to play this space at nighttime than daytime for obvious reasons. Deck 19 is where you'll find the Vibe Beach Club. This is a four fee adults only area. Now on Encore, this area is much, much bigger than on previous ships. Uh, over the past year or so, Norwegian has more than doubled the original price they charge for the access to Vibe. Um, and people have been willing to pay it. So with Encore, they're obviously betting on the fact that because there is no Spice H2O, which remember it was a free adults-only space, that there's going to be a higher demand for access to the Vibe Beach Club. And that'll do it for our tour of Norwegian Encore. My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of the Cruise Radio podcast and the daily Cruise Radio news briefs. You can find both of those where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. Some final thoughts on Norwegian Encore. This ship is perhaps the most beautiful one in the NCL fleet, the public spaces in general, and particularly the observation lounge. They're both designed to be comfortable while delivering that wow factor, which they definitely do. If there's a downside, it's how much of the top deck space has been devoted to things like racetracks, laser tags, and even the Vibe Beach Club, which is all a revenue game, right? You have to pay to use. So... Other than that, though, just a beautiful ship. It's going to spend some time in Miami, also New York, and then Alaska. So uh, this ship's going to be all over, and rightfully so. If you like this video and you want to see more content, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. What do you think of Norwegian Encore? Have you sailed her? Are you looking at sailing her, or are you booked? Let me know in the comments below, and thank you so much for watching.